The demand for Andor is significantly lower than that of other Star Wars live action shows, and we should look into why is that. First and foremost, I think branding is an issue with Andor. It's just not a name that carries as much weight as Kenobi or even Book of Boba Fett. Those two shows are based on characters that we've known for the past 40 years, considering they were in the original series. Of course, Kenobi had Ewan McGregor return, and we had seen him in the prequels, and we knew that Hayden Christensen was returning as well. If they had decided to call the show something like Rise of the Rebellion or reuse the name Shadows of the Empire, I think Andor would have had a better opportunity than just the name Andor. Number two, it's obvious that there's just far more competition facing Andor than there were other shows. When The Mandalorian launched, it was by itself and it was coming out at the same time as Rise of Skywalker and it was the flagship show for Disney+. Plus. So as soon as you logged into Disney+, Plus, there is an enormous banner, The Mandalorian, and everyone was buying this service and experiencing it for the first time. It also had the benefit of using Grogu, at that time Baby Yoda, right in the opening episode episode which caused Twitter to explode and everyone was seeing this new character for the first time. There was a lot of excitement around a also good product compared to The Rise of Skywalker, which was a bad product. Of course, Andor is also facing competition from shows like Rings of Power, House of the Dragon, and She-Hulk, and it's going to even face competition with Tales of the Jedi inside of its own Star Wars universe on Disney+. Plus. Most of the other Star Wars shows have come out and have been by themselves. There hasn't been a lot of overlap between Star Wars and Marvel, and now you're having an overlap of the first few episodes of Star Wars and Marvel, and then you're going to have an overlap of Star Wars and Star Wars, which certainly also doesn't help Andor. And then of course, there is the final reason, which is the genre and the rating. Andor isn't about a Jedi. It is a spy thriller, and it's also a bit darker and also a bit more adult. So it's unlikely that kids are going to be as into Andor as they would be into Kenobi or even the Book of Boba Fett. And of course, this by no means that Andor is a bad show. In fact, Andor actually has higher ratings on Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes than that of Book of Boba Fett and Kenobi. So I think sometimes you just have to look at your expectations for what a show being successful means. Obviously, with its more adult tone and setting, it's not going to appeal to as many people, but that doesn't mean that the show isn't successful. Rated R movies are very successful, but more often than not, they just can't draw the same amount of money as PG-13 movies because PG-13 movies are available to be watched by more people. So even if Andor is getting bad ratings in terms of its streaming numbers, you have to look at it in a different light than you would Kenobi and Book of Boba Fett. Andor is an excellent, excellent show that continues to impress every single week, and I have no doubt that it will still be considered a success even if its numbers aren't as large as Kenobi and Mandalorian and Boba Fett.